Hello! In this video we will add an ability to switch between three lanes. Let's open our run character blueprint. First we need to create a new custom event. Let's name it change lane. And we need to add a new input parameter with the type integer and a name shift lane. Also, we need a few variables. Let's add the first one and name it lane position. It should be an array of float items. Let's compile and add three items here. It would be three lane positions along the y-axis in the world. Let's make the first lane position minus 250, second lane 0 and the third lane 250. And we need a single integer variable with the name current lane index. And another single integer variable with the name target lane index. Let's try to set a new target lane index. We need to get our shift lane input value and add it to our current lane index. And we need to set the result as a new target lane index. And it's better if we clamp this value between 0 and 2, because we have only 3 lanes here. Now we need to set an actual location for our character. Let's add a set actor location node here. And let's add a new vector here. And we need to get this actor's location and break an output vector. Now we need to connect X and Z values here. And we need to get a position for the target lane and set it as Y value for our new location. And let's update our current lane index at the end. Now it's time to use this change lane event. Let's get nodes for A key to move left and for D key to move right. And let's connect it to our change lane event node with minus one shift lane value for A key and one for D key. Let's test it. As we can see, our character can switch lanes now. Actually, it's hard to see. Let's change a material for our floor. Now we can see movement much better. But we have another problem. Our run character changes lanes instantly. Let's add some transition animation for this movement. The easiest way to add a transition here is Timeline node. Let's name it Change Lane Timeline. Now we need to change its length to 0.2. And we need to add a new float track. We need to add 0 value at 0 time and value 1 at the time 0.2. And we need to play this timeline from start. We need a new float variable for our current Y position.
and we need to set its value right before the timeline node. Let's copy this getActorLocation node and use its y value for our variable. Now we need to use a linear interpolation node with our new track as alpha. And we need to set a current y position as a value and target lane position as b value. And let's set this lerp output as a y value for our new location vector. Let's play it again. Now we have some nice transition animation here. It's better to set a current lane location after the finish of this animation. So let's connect this node properly. And the last thing to fix. If you play this game and press D key for the first time, nothing happens. It's because we have a value 0 as our current lane index, but our real initial lane index is 1, because we are starting from the middle lane. Let's fix it by changing our default current lane index to 1. Now our character moves the way it should. That's all for now. I hope you like this video and it will be helpful for you. Thanks for watching.